Every now and then when I want to impress my kids, I put this on to remind them who their dad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> When Chris Cassidy was accepted into NASA's program in 2004, there were around 120 astronauts. I sat in a seat right below that window right there. When he retired after a final flight in 2020, only 40 remained. Myself and two cosmonauts were the only two people not on Earth during COVID. Roger, roll, endeavor. The end of NASA's shuttle program. We've got some breaking news began 20 years ago. The space shuttle Columbia was going over North Texas. Following news of tragedy. There you see what appears to be multiple pieces. On February 1st, 2003, the Columbia space shuttle was ripped apart on reentry, killing the seven astronauts on board. NASA is confirming that it lost contact with the shuttle. So I was printing everything, making sure it was all perfect, compiling the papers when the accident happened. And I remember stuffing all those th things into a big envelope and mailing it and going, whoa, okay, it's, it's real. Cassidy's training began in 2004, just months after word the shuttle program would end. The space shuttle, after nearly 30 years of duty, will be retired from service. But that end was the beginning of a new era. And then you go, is that gonna work? Like, is there enough money? Like, is there enough? Is there a market for it? That was Yuel Quintana's reaction when Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin first set up in Van Horn, not far from where he teaches at UTEP. All those companies are hurting, hurting for engineers. Now 50% of its staff are UTEP grads, and it's made six crewed space missions. The university is also just 45 minutes from Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic, which made it to space nine days before Bezos. Just imagine what you can do. Going to space, spaceships was sexy. It was fast, it was on the edge, it was risky, it was um, next level. Craig Curran has been a travel agent 35 years and now books people on space experiences. He's around 400th in line to fly on Virgin ship. All of this infrastructure is starting to become built out right now, and it's here. A thousand people have already paid the $450,000 fee to fly Virgin, which has gone 53 miles up. Blue Origin went 66 miles up and auctioned its first seat for 20 million, and three men paid $55 million each to fly SpaceX to the space station, 250 miles above the Earth. The vision for these companies, to me, is infinitely more ambitious than, than NASA has uh, ever had. Marco Caceres is the senior space analyst at the Teal Group and says SpaceX is focused on exploration while Blue Origin and Virgin target tourism. But all three are quickly lowering costs for space travel to eventually be on par with a plane ticket. I don't think it's a pipe dream, but I, I, don't, I don't think you're going to see in the next 10 years. In 50 years, maybe it's like, hey, what do you want to do for a Christmas break this year? Want to go to Hawaii? No, Dad, we went there last year. Let's go to the space station. Okay, all right, we'll go to the space station. Cassidy isn't bothered by private astronauts. He welcomes them. The world would be better off if every single person had five minutes to look out the window of a spacecraft and see Earth going by. You just see blue and green and brown and white clouds and white mountaintops and oceans of all colors. It looks like one blob that's a home for everyone. The eventual goal is using the moon as a launch pad to colonize Mars. It's a truly out of this world idea becoming increasingly possible. It sounds goofy, but yeah. it's very possible. Like just a little over hundred years ago, the Wright brothers first flew. And now we're talking about space flight. So who knows what it'll be. In Dallas, I'm William Joy.